Hi everybody. Uh, welcome. Got my old 66 mag. Just saw I've had 33 years, believe it or not. I rebuilt it a few years ago. Stone stock, no port work, no muffler mod, no nothing. I wanted this one to be a long lasting, reliable saw with all steel parts, and I was adamant to do that. We got that new build, the 100cc one, so you know. What I want to cover is what we do here on the East Coast, okay? I had a guy named Eric, a young fella, uh, came over from West Coast, and they did all that cable logging and crap. They didn't even use skitter. And he was a feller out there, and he did a good job. He came out here, and he went to work for me for a year or so. And he, he had trouble. It's way it's such a difference between West Coast and East Coast. So this is for East Coast guys. If you pick something up out of this, great. It's not really intended to be a sharpening video. Other, I'm going to show you a few things that worked for me, right or wrong. Okay, the first thing you need to know, how a chip is formed. You can't sharpen to your very best until you know what that, how that does, okay? Now, here's your deal, right here. Look at this chip. Okay, you see that groove down the center of that? You notice that that chip is twice as wide as that tooth okay that's twice as wide okay what happens the depth gauge on this side determines the thickness of the chip here then that chip passes underneath it's still attached on this side it comes to this depth gauge and then comes through and it cuts the other side off okay you see that this is why on the East Coast we use full skip chain. All right? Do you realize that when you're making this wide of a chip right here, that there's no contact whatsoever with this bar? None, okay? Okay, so we just showed the process of that. What happens to the chip? None, okay? It comes right up and they stack against your raker, your depth gauge. And then the next one comes right up on top of that and so on and so forth. If you're cutting with the top of your bar, as soon as it's able, it spits it out that way. If you're cutting with the bottom of your bar, obviously it comes through and it rolls out uh, your exhaust here on your bottom. Okay, that's how that works. Okay, if you're not getting that, and you don't see that little line, and it's even on both sides. Some woods just chunk out, uh, like red oak just kind of chunks out, and uh, a lot of times northern pine hemlock will chunk right out. Uh, so you don't see this type of chip. This is good for like maple, ash, elder, uh, one thing, another. Uh, but it's a good indicator. So when you're cutting that kind of stuff, and you're forming, actually forming a chip, and I'm gonna cover that chunking, what the difference is in sharpening, okay? Now, when you get old, you gotta put glasses on and one thing or another. So what I do is leave a witness mark so I know I'm not resharpening. Okay, I've got one right here on this one already. See the back side of that? That's a little, all I do is just take my file and like that. That tells me that's the tooth I started with. If you don't have to wear glasses, what you do is you roll around and get your worst, worst tooth and that, pretty much determines there's no substitute for having ground chain to keep everything even I'm showing you what loggers on the East Coast do because all day long they try to run that same chain now if you're it takes less time for me to sharpen a full skip than it does change the chain I'm gonna tell you that straight out and that's production numbers nothing worse than a skitter waiting the angles that we use, I form my tip first. Okay, here's a prime example. This is what I'm going to cover. Buckin says get to go it. See this right here? Right here on my strap. See this area? See where it starts right here? I can tell you for a fact I'm the only one that's ever sharpened this. See how even that is coming down? It fairly well matches this angle. To, to, and it stops right there. Okay, this is how I judge how good a person is at hand filing, how even each one of these are. Uh, it ain't just that one, you can see that one. 
and that one and that one okay now that made me sound like i bragged again and i ain't bragging i'm stating a fact i can sharpen just fine i've had to yeah i sucked at it forever every day you do it you suck just a little less it's just like playing music man and you will get where you can okay oak believe it or not oak and uh, hemlock my angle you're going to come from the top here is you rock that back fairly well follow the line in the summertime i'll lead that just a little bit like this but it ain't level it's down about 10 degrees i'm going to show you why i'll do this one i rotate my file that's kind of a bad ugly tooth one that okay I know I'm bow filing. What you do is you get your point. Get that form. Come right up underneath that. Okay? Now, I'm going to do this for summertime. So I'm leading my angle just a bit. Look down at this top angle right here. See that line? It's leading it just a little bit on this working uh, uh, edge. This is your working point. Okay, so when you look right up underneath there if you can see right in there you see the width of that is fairly much the same right across that point of that tooth when you have it like that what it does during the cut that chain is not pressing into the bar it's actually relieving pressure and pulling up okay just a little bit now on the east coast we don't point our depth gauges and the reason our chains uh, work better when they're right down to this point the distance from here to here is longer that means your depth gauge is more efficient when it's out right here close that tooth will rock like this a lot easier this keeps it stable okay when we file straight across like that See, no, no noise, this angle right here. Follow your tooth angle, like that, okay? You get to the other side, you do the same thing. You follow the tooth angle. You'll never, when that is vibrating, you're not cutting. It isn't about strokes or, or nothing, it's the distance, okay? Here's our distance. This is how, in the woods, where you have no grinder, you go from this point to this point to know what that depth gauge is you do that with your raker file okay can we get right up underneath there so we can see the depth of that see that depth that tells me where that's at i look at that and i just know that if i'm in something like pig nut and hickory that right there would probably be a little aggressive and be uh, hard okay but right here it would cut good in that I don't get carried away unless I'm in a hurry. I'll take an extra swipe or two off them rakers if that skitter's getting close, but that makes that saw jumpy. Okay, then you go to the next one like this, right off that point to that point, and you check that one, if you can see that, and that tells you what that depth gauge is. Okay, that changes from tooth to tooth to tooth. It just happens that these happen to be fairly even, so I wish I had a chain on here that I'd hit something on one side. If I hit something over here on this outside working corner like a rock when I'm bore cutting, that takes that edge off. I'll file this one back a long ways. These will be longer. I just keep that side depth gauge as lower, and I try to keep them as even as I can. Okay, so we know how the chip is formed now. The chip comes up here, piles up here, stacks up. This is why we use full skip. There's two reasons. The first reason is you're not recutting your sawdust, okay, with a longer bar. We use 24 inch bar predominantly here. We didn't use, we used to use long bars, okay? And then when that rolls around a tip or comes out through, it comes out your uh, exhaust, uh, the chip's dumped. Uh, I'm going to cover something I wasn't going to cover about this thing. Uh, chainsaw safety. When you're bore cutting, you have an angle right here from here to here. 
is all it's safe to roll in. If you roll that saw in, like this, let's say your tree's right here, you roll that in and then bore cut to make your uh, hinge. We'll cover cutting when I do some cutting, which we will be directly. And, uh, but this right here, third, this bottom third, bottom third is where your safe zone is. When you start crowding right here, let's say you enter plunge cut, especially full skip. I'm going to warn you, because there's not three teeth around, there's only two, okay? It'll jump on you. Be ready. This is higher kickback chain. Yep, it cuts faster in our wood. Uh, do I run full house? Yeah, there's times I do. In the wintertime, I run full house bucking logs straight away. I do. I do not buck logs with the saw I'm cutting all day long with, unless I change my chain and bar. I won't even run the same bar. Uh, I use these total super bars on the heavier saws. They're real hard. They're heavy. Uh, you don't get the bar wear. We've had this in a long time. Uh, you can see that, that there's no flare, no edge anywhere. It's because this angle is correct for East Coast. Okay, I showed you the summertime. I'm going to go to the next two, screw this chain all up because I know I can fix it. All right? winter time this works when you got sap in the wood I'm gonna show you here in the winter time what we do see that angle when you're cutting frozen maple it's tough this is our angle we're gonna raise that up to about four degrees and we're gonna bring that back to about this angle here if you can see it from the top uh, it goes so you know here's your top plate angle from your line Okay, you're gonna go just a little bit. So you're you're taking just that at. See that? Now when you look at that top line, that's slightly more than our angle. And instead of being 10 degrees, we're gonna go up here to five degrees. Okay. I'm not gonna get finished that whole working edge outside. Okay. Now what you got right in here it's a thinner area here than is here but the cutting corner or cutting edge isn't at this much angle it's more this way because frozen wood has to chunk it doesn't just peel in the slivers it has to chunk out when it's froze okay so that's that's what there is about that this is what works for us out here there ain't a logger out here that'll agree, that'll disagree with what I'm saying. Don't think hand filings for everybody. Take your chains, get them ground periodically, and you're going to save all kinds of grief. If you're logging, you've been extreme logging a long time, there ain't nothing you're learning from me. You're going to say, yeah, okay, yeah, I got it, because that's exactly what we do here, too. And that's what some of you is going to say. Uh, there's going to be the ones halfway, well, I didn't get that. What are you doing this way and this way? We have to learn how to correct our filing problems. Now, you know what I did? I, for about four years, had to fight felling trees. I had to learn how to correct my difference. One side would cut way better than the other, and I didn't know what the deal was. And I didn't know to read that bottom of that strap there between the depth gauge and the frickin' uh, tooth. I didn't know how to read that. All right. That determines, if that's straight across there, you know your angles are all the same right here, I'll guarantee. There is no argument from nobody, yeah, I'm a opinionated old bugger, but when you see that like that, there is no argument that I'm accurate with this angle. I maintain that on every tooth, no question. You will learn this. If you want to learn how to uh, sharpen, Buck and Billy really is the one to follow. He can teach you how to sharpen. I'm showing you, once you already know how to sharpen, how to use different angles for different woods. That's what I'm doing winter and summer. And uh, if you take your rakers too far, it'll be so jumpy and you ain't gonna have enough power to pull it in the first place. Here's another advantage to this full scap. It's a third less cutting teeth. That's a third less I gotta screw up. It is a third less time for me to sharpen when I got a skitter running right up my butt, okay? 
there's several advantages. They came out when they started running the 60 or the 70 cc saws instead of these 90. They went to the brought that full skip out to play so that it would cut with less power, you could carry less weight. Okay, and that's really what happened there. And uh, but when I sharpen, my dominant hand is my left, left hand. One hand, rotate. One hand, rotate. I got control of that file. My problem was I was actually getting too deep in a weird angle with this side because I'm left-handed. So I learned to grab that file. I pull it with this hand. This is my dominant hand. For your right-handed people, just reverse that. See, that's what you do. If that works for you, great. Find a way to be even from side to side. This is all you need to do, okay? And we've heard so many hot saws start. Let me show you one that ain't hot. And uh, just a regular old 66. A lot of people don't like these switches. When I build your steel, I fix that so that's easy to operate. chugs out you're too rich if when you're bringing that up and it has this kind of a soft spot where it kind of wants to bog out for the hijack uh, takes over and you feel that that's harder to feel it's too lean on your low thank you guys that's it